Well, a warm welcome to today's talk. It's Sunday, the 2nd of January, and of course, Happy New Year to everyone. Now, I want to look at some scientific research today from South Africa that's been pretty well ignored by the mainstream media, it seems. What this research is showing is that people that have been infected by Omicron are developing immunity, which gives them a large scale protection or a lot of protection against a Delta variant. Now, what this means is, that as we speak now, millions of us, unfortunately, are becoming, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, are being coming infected with Omicron. And that means that as we become infected with Omicron, this is going to give us infection against Delta. And this means that Delta is going to have nowhere to go because everywhere it goes, people will be resistant to Delta. Therefore, Delta should die out. In other words, Omicron should completely, over not too much time, displace Delta. And this Delta variant that's made so many people so sick and has taken so many lives should be history completely replaced by the Omicron variant. That is the contention. Now, let's look at whether that, that's true or not by analysing this science. And basically, we think it is. Um, but here's, here's the science. Now, this is the paper it's from. Now, this is from South Africa. It is a, it is a preprint. Um, but it's all there and uh, I've read it all and it looks pretty good to me. I'm not that familiar with the detailed experimental techniques in it, but I'm sure they are correct and everything else looks absolutely spot on. So this is um, it's there. Check it out for yourself. Um, Africa Health Research Institute School of Laboratory Medical and uh, Medical Sciences and virtually other every, every other reputable sort of sounding <laughs> institution in South Africa has been involved in this. So many institutions. Um, so it's got it's got a great deal of credibility behind it is what I'm saying. Omicron has been shown to be highly transmissible. Yes, fact. That's for sure. Omicron has extensive evasion of neutralising antibody immunity, say antibody immunity generated by Delta. That is true. Antibody immunity. And of course, it's the antibody immunity. If you've got pure, poor antibody immunity, then you can get symptomatic disease. Now, this is not talking about T cell immunity, as we talked about with Professor Bezad just recently. We believe that is preserved. This is antibody immunity, which is going to protect against symptomatic disease. So this is what this is talking about. So Omicron has extensive evasion of neutralising antibody immunity elicited by vaccination and previous SARS coronavirus 2 infection. This is why so many people are currently getting symptomatic Omicron infection. Because we don't have this cross reactivity of the antibodies from the vaccine and previous exposure to Delta variant as we would have liked. Therefore, we're getting these escape infections. Omicron infections are rapidly expanding worldwide, often in the face of high levels of Delta infections. So the Omicron infections are surging into areas where there's been a lot of Delta infection just recently. And of course, that brings to mind some pretty important questions, which, of course, the researchers have thought of. Um, do Omicron antibodies neutralise Delta virus variant? Does it work the other way around? You see, we, we know that if you've got Delta antibodies, that's not going to effectively neutralise Omicron. That's why so many, as, uh, so many of us are getting Omicron at the moment, because we are not protected that well by the wild type antibodies or the original virus type antibodies induced by the vaccine or the wide scale immunity generated by the Delta, which is good for Delta, but not good for Omicron. So it doesn't work the other way around. But this is the question. Do Omicron antibodies neutralise Delta virus variant? That is the question. And the answer to this does seem to be yes. Or just to rephrase that question. Does neutralising immunity elicited by Omicron also enhance neutralising immunity against the Delta variant? Just rephrasing the question, really. And again, the answer does appear to be yes. But let's look at the method used. Now, this is a quite impressive science on this on this paper, really. It's a... It's, uh, I mean, I've never done sort of uh, laboratory-based virology, so some of the techniques, I've done a lot of uh, uh, biology in other ways, but uh, I haven't done this specific uh, virology biology, and it's pretty impressive techniques, I must say. Anyway, they've isolated the Omicron virus and the Delta virus, so in fact they isolated quite a few viruses of different variants, different mutation profiles. And they tested these against the plasma of 15 confirmed Omicron cases. So these would be people who were developing or had developed antibody immunity to Omicron. They used the live virus neutralization assay. In other words, their assessment used live viruses. 
So they use live Omicron viruses, live Delta virus, and live uh, various mutated viruses. Now, of course, the thing with the thing with viruses is, and this is one of the, this is the one of the reasons this is really quite clever is viruses can only grow inside cells, as Professor Bezad said just the other day. They are obligate intracellular genetic parasites. I think was some term like that he used. They can only grow inside living cells. So what they had to do was take a cell culture of living cells and grow the viruses in those living cells. And the culture they used was called Vero E6. And the cells were propagated in a complete growth medium. So they had a growth medium with everything that these cells need. Now, these Vero cells have been around for as long as I can remember. Um, certainly back in the 80s, these Vero cells were around. And I think they were actually isolated in the early 60s from what I remember. And for sure, they are, they are monkey uh, kidney cells. Uh, they're, they're, they're monkey epithelial kidney cells, green African monkeys, I think. And these cells basically were made immortal in the 1960s and they've been kept on propagating all the way down. And uh, that's what that was used. That, that's what they used to grow these viruses in. So this culture of living cells and they, they are commercially available. So uh, if you wanted to do some living cell uh, experiments yourself, you could actually uh, you can actually commercially uh, obtain these. So that's what was used to generate the actual live viruses. And then they uh, calculated the focus reduction neutralization test, the focus reduction neutralization test when 50 percent of the viruses are neutralized. And this is just a standard way. This is an internationally standard way to analyze how effective an antibody is against a particular uh, type of virus. In this case, the antibodies for Omicron against the Delta type of virus see if that works. So volunteers, some have been previously vaccinated, some were unvaccinated individuals who were previously infected with SARS coronavirus 2 in the uh, Omicron infection wave. So if they're infected in the Omicron wave, then these people would have antibodies to the Omicron. That is the key thing, because we want to know if the Omicron antibodies are going to protect us against Delta infection, because we want rid of this Delta variant. We've, we've had quite enough of that. Thank you very much. Now, they recruited soon after symptom onset. Now, the thing is, soon after symptom onset, they would not have generated a significant antibody response. But then what they did was they tested them just after onset of symptoms because they recruited them at an early stage. Then they tested them uh, 14 days after the onset of symptoms when the bodies had time to make the antibodies. So they could compare them before they made antibodies and after they made antibodies really is quite quite uh, quite neat no, oh, oh, not a large sample size but um quite quite detailed science the researchers say we then measured their ability to neutralize both omicron and delta virus at enrollment in other words when they just had when they just developed the infection versus a medium of 14 days after enrollment when they'd had time to make the antibodies. So this was before they'd had time to mount an antibody Omicron response. This is after they'd had time to mount an antibody Omicron response. Uh, neutralizing, uh, neutralization of Omicron increased 14 fold over this time. Wow, impressive. So over the 14 days um, from, from day some people were day one, two, three, four after infection, so probably about three days after infection on average, where they'd start to develop a few IgMs, uh, immunoglobulin type Ms, but by 14 days they'd have a good uh, IgM and uh, IgG, immunoglobulin type G response. So uh, they had good levels of antibodies after that time, and they found that there was a 14 fold increased neutralization of the Omicron virus after 14 days. In other words, they developed good immunity against the Omicron virus, which they were currently infected with. So that's good because that means people get better from the Omicron. Uh, and, and we know that Omicron usually has a shorter course than Delta. So what they concluded from this was uh, showing a, a developed antibody response to Omicron, which, which you would expect. So there's nothing surprising there. All of the variants that people have been infected with as people uh, develop immunity, they eliminate that virus and they have a level of immunity against that particular viral strain, that particular viral strain. So people infected with Omicron, yeah, they, they, get, they, they get immunity against Omicron, as you would expect. But also, they also in, developed enhanced uh, immunity to the Delta virus neutralization four and a half times. So 4.4 times more immunity to the Delta variant. So after two weeks of infection with Omicron, 
they were 14 times more resistant to Omicron, but four and a half times more resistant to Delta, meaning that people would be unlikely to become infected with Delta after they have been infected with Omicron. And that's got remarkably profound implications because it means the Omicron is protecting against the Delta. That is really quite a, quite a thing, really, that this has happened. Um, therefore, that the increase in Delta variant neutralization in individuals infected with Omicron may result in a decreased ability of Delta to reinfect. Direct quote from the authors. We are preventing Delta reinfection. So, in other words, we've kind of got this the right way around. Um, if it was, the, it, it, well, if we got it the right way or the wrong way around, I can't quite work that one out. So if you've, you've had the Delta, you're not protected against the Omicron. But if you've had the Omicron, then you are protected against subsequent Delta infection. That's the key point. And it's remarkably, this is remarkably good news. Also, emerging data indicates that Omicron is less pathogenic than Delta. So which would you prefer to have? Would I prefer to be infected with Omicron or Delta? Let me think. Of course, the Omicron. I prefer to be infected with the Omicron rather than the Delta. Therefore, cross immunity from Omicron to Delta may have positive implications in terms of decreasing the COVID burden of severe disease. Wow, that is really quite something. Cross immunity. So the Omicron is giving us cross immunity to help us protect against the delta therefore we're probably going to get rid of delta and it's probably going to be completely taken over by omicron because the delta will have nowhere to go because anyone it happens to float into anyone who is exposed to delta pretty soon pretty soon will have been exposed to omicron have immunity to omicron therefore have cross immunity that will also protect them against delta it really couldn't be any better than this um, the ability of one variant to elicit immunity which can cross neutralize another variant varies by variants. <laughs> in, in other words, some variants protect against some variants and some variants don't. Let's just put some uh, meat on that. So immunity elicited by Delta infection does not cross neutralize beta virus. Now the beta of course came before the Delta in South Africa. The beta was the uh, what we used to call the South Africa variant. But immunity to Delta, in other words, Delta antibodies do not cross neutralize beta virus. Thankfully, there is no beta virus anymore. So that's kind of a bit of irrelevant, but interesting all the same. Immunity elicited by beta infection, um, which, of course, did come before the beta infection did come before the Delta, does not cross neutralize Delta well. And this is why so many this all makes sense now. It's why so many people in South Africa, so many poor people had the beta and then they were reinfected with the Delta, so they had it twice. But this perfectly explains why. It perfectly explains why, because the beta antibodies are not protecting against the Delta variant, as the Omicron antibodies are protecting against the Delta variant. So we're in, we're in a much better place. Participants in this study, so they are putting a proof proviso on the provisors on this. Many have probably been previously infected several times, so that, that could skew the results a bit because the good scientists they admit these limitations more than half were vaccinated which again could skew the results a little bit and therefore they do say activation of antibody immunity from previous infections and or other vaccination is possible that's possible but that doesn't alter their experimental findings that omicron antibodies are protecting against delta variant virus Right, the implications of this. Uh, these results are consistent with the Omicron displacing the Delta variant, which I've suspected for some time, but this is the science that demonstrates that. As cross immunity makes reinfection with Delta less likely. Reinfection with Delta less likely, therefore the amounts of Delta prevalence will go down and down until it basically doesn't exist, I would hope. But previous Delta exposure will not prevent from symptomatic Omicron infection, which, of course, we are seeing. So previous Delta exposure will not protect against symptomatic Omicron infection, which is why there's so much symptomatic Omicron infection now around. Keep clicking on the wrong one. There we go. Uh, so 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 the, the previous Delta exposure will not protect from symptomatic Omicron infection. But Delta infection and vaccine exposure does generate a T-cell response 
which of course this study is not about, but the T-cell response we talked about with Professor Bezad a couple of days ago, and that is giving cross-protection. In other words, people that have had Delta variant or people that have been vaccinated can well get symptomatic, in symptomatic infection of Omicron because they are not being protected against the symptoms because of the antibodies generated to the Delta don't work well against the Omicron variant. But the T-cell response does. So people that have had the vaccine or people that have had the Delta have generated a T-cell response against that, and that should protect us against severe Omicron disease. But people who have the Omicron antibodies should be protected against symptomatic or indeed any type of infection with Delta. So there we go. Um, and the, the final thing they say, uh, if indeed Omicron is less pathogenic than Delta, the incidence of COVID-19 severe disease will be reduced because we're going to get rid of Delta. So we're going to get less and less people sick. Infection may shift to become less disruptive to individuals and society. Is what they say. In other words, this is entirely consistent with what we've been saying for a couple of weeks now, that we are going well into an endemic phase. Now, just to give some empirical backup of this, let's just look at this is the latest data from... Well, actually, when I say the latest data, I've just checked this, and it's, this is actually the data for the 31st of December. But nevertheless, this is from the... Uh, this is the totality of the UK data. Um now, th th this here is the total amount of uh, positive cases. So we can see that the size of the green block is getting smaller. So we can see that fewer and fewer cases of Delta are present. So if the block was still that size, that was still that size there, then we'd have Omicron and Delta together. But this is not showing that. This is showing that Omicron is displacing Delta. Consistent so this empirical observation from the UK is consistent with the theoretical science from South Africa. Omicron is displacing Delta. And when we look at the uh, London data, which of course is even further on, uh, we see that in London there's even less Delta compared to the large amounts of Omicron. So we see that Delta is largely displaced. Uh, in fact, we see that 96.4% of cases in London are Omicron. So only a very small percentage of Delta left. So um, well, that was interesting science, very encouraging that we've got this cross immunity, that exposure to Omicron produces Omicron antibodies, which are also protecting us against Delta. Therefore, Delta, I believe, will go away because it won't be able to find anyone that it can infect because everyone's going to be immune to it. OK, there, there might be the odd sporadic case for some time into the future but ba basically the, the Omicron has replaced the Delta pandemic and that appears to be remarkably good news. That's what the science is showing us consistent with the empirical observations at the moment so we'll leave that there on that optimistic note and thank you very much for watching.